Hello! You may have seen my previous video about 3D printed ball bearings. I use them with great success, but I found a better design. In fact, it's just the most popular ball bearing design in the world, slightly adapted for 3D printing. It beats my previous design in almost all aspects, and is probably the best design you can print. In this video, I will explain how to design and make deep groove ball bearing and show you how to integrate it into your builds. This type of bearing consists of only three parts. The inner race, the outer race and the cage. As the name implies, there are deep grooves on both races. Let's draw them in CAD. That's actually very easy and will not take much time. Create a sketch and draw a line that will be our bearing axis. Draw a perpendicular line to the point that will be in between of races. The length will define the size of our bearing. Now draw an arc like this. The radius should be slightly bigger than the radius of rolling elements. Now draw a line here and make it tangent to the arc and also at 45 degrees angle. We are making this design for 3D printing and cannot have high angle overhangs. 45 degree overhangs prints well on all modern 3D printers. Now draw a few vertical and horizontal lines like this. It will start making sense very soon. Now we need to draw a vertical construction line here. And finally, we can mirror all these lines two times. First time around this line, and then once again around this line. Now we can define the width of our bearing here. This gap should be sized to a half of the ball's diameter. That's all important dimensions we need. You can finish the rest as you like. I will do it this way. Now revolve everything around the axis and we have our races. Pretty simple so far, right? But here comes a small issue. These races are completely solid and we cannot fit balls through the gap. So how are we going to assemble it? I've seen some people make a small hole like this, but we will use a different method. This problem was solved a long time ago by a guy named Robert Conrad. Here is his patent. His idea was to offset the inner race to create a large enough gap on the opposite side. That's why I made the gap exactly half of the ball's diameter. But to finish the bearing we also need the cage. I designed it like this. Kinda a weird shape, but every feature here is for a purpose. Now I can print the bearing, and while it prints I have a quick message about the sponsor of this video, GLCPCB. They provide a great range of services for your hobby or commercial projects, such as PCB manufacturing and assembly, 3D printing and CNC machining. It's very easy to submit your design and order their services. Every custom PCB featured on this channel is made by them, by the way. They also recently launched a store with various mechanic components, like bearings, diamond belts, springs, etc. So now most of your needs for engineering projects are covered in one place and for a very reasonable price. Check out their website, I will leave a link in the description. Let's assemble the bearing. First offset the inner race. Then fill the gap with the right number of rolling elements. Now we can carefully guide some of them to the opposite side. And the bearing is already kinda locked. Of course, balls can move freely for now, so we need to place a cage to prevent it from falling apart. To do that, we first need to evenly distribute balls to have them somewhere around their intended positions. Now look at the cage shape. This feature will help us guide rolling elements to their place. 
and these slots will make the final click easier. That's how you make the most common bearing in the world. The Conrad style deep groove ball bearing. And I really like its simplicity. Even a simpler cage design like this would work. I just aimed for a slightly more convenient one. Which is helpful if you are going to assemble them in tricky places. If you are using on shape, I have good news for you. I made a configurable version of this design that's really easy to integrate into mechanical parts. You will find the link in the description. I will show you by example. Let's say we have this gear and want to attach it to this part with a bearing. First, we can attach it without a bearing. We can extrude an axis from this gear and then use subtract operation to create a hole in the base part. We can also add a center hole to save some material. And now we can easily add a bearing right in between. Click this button and use the link from the description to find my document. Fill in all the parameters. The diameter here is the diameter of a circle that goes through the centers of all balls. So we should use our axis diameter. These three checkboxes control what bodies will be created. It's inner and outer races by default, but I have a different plan here. We need to uncheck races and check the gap part for subtracting. The bearing parameters are configured. Now we can use these fields to move our bearing to the right place. All that is left is to use the subtract operation to cut races in our parts. Check how it looks in a section. And we are done. I usually use a slightly different way of putting it together if possible. In this particular case, extruding the cage for a few extra millimeters could be a great idea. Because to take the bearing apart after assembly, we need to extract the cage first. Usually we can just push it out from the other side, but here the axis is blocked by the gear. And this cage extension will let us to take it apart without much effort. Thanks for watching. The description includes cut files and other useful links. If you subscribe, you will see how I built an RC car chassis with these bearings and my own several motors next time. Have a great day!